Greetings and welcome back to the bench. On the bench today is the inline version of the JAT501 amplifier where all the transistors that mount on a heat sink are in line here. So, you know, now you have that option. The fellow who I collaborated with on having these boards done took it upon himself to make this. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. He sent me this board here. Yeah. Intel inside. So yeah, he had uh, one of those old socket or uh, cartridge type processors, I guess. And uh, use that. So yeah, it's just for testing. It's not really the way I would um, hook this thing or uh, mount this thing up on a heat sink. But yeah, we got Intel inside here going on. I have to play that Intel music. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, the original design was the flat on the heat sink design with the uh, little ear, the transistor sticking out like little ears on the side there. But I know some people uh, wanted to have this option. Now one difference on this board is there's no fuses. So... You want to fuse each board in your amplifier on the power supply, whereas this board has the fuses right there. So yeah, it makes it a little more compact. So we're going to hook this thing up and give it a whirl, see what it does. Before I get rolling here, just a quick thing here. John Audio Tech Channel has hit 50,000 subscribers. Took almost 10 years to do it. In fact, here in the summer, I think August is when the channel turns 10 years old. So it's taken me a while. So yeah, I'm still small potatoes. I still got 50,000 to go before I get any sort of YouTube award. Who knows if they'll even give them out if and when I do get to 100,000 subs. Because that'll probably be quite a while and there'll be so many channels that have that many views. They might decide not to hand them out anymore, but, uh, you know, whatever. So thanks a lot to all the viewers, the subscribers, and Patreon supporters. Really appreciate that. And I uh, should mention thanks to the people who sent me things in over the last few years here on the channel. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, we'll hook this up and test it out. And this other board I made and never has never been powered up before. The board over here I put on the heat sink. And I matched the transistors and all that stuff. Same with this board. I'm kind of curious how well it'll match up. Would the offset voltage be the same on the output? And also, when I bias the other amp up by adjusting the, the uh, trimmer here, I took my meter and measured that trimmer and then transferred the setting over to this one. So when I power it up, I just wonder how will they match up because we're using uh, parts with the same gain, these transistors, I mean, and the 1% resistors. I didn't really match the outputs. I did match these transistors here, the uh, the BD transistors, but yeah, I'm kind of curious how those will match up. So uh, without further ado, let's hook this one up and okay, we got everything connected here, biased up. I check the output offset. It's at six millivolts, which is very good. It's under ten. Now this board over here in another video was three, but I don't know if this one, you know, the transistors and everything were matched or not. But yeah, it's under 10, so it's still very good. Okay, let's listen to some sample music. some teenage angst music so yeah this thing makes some sort of sound oh I forgot to turn on its little 
cooling fan, the Intel inside fan. Crank it up. Let's keep it slow because we're not really doing anything crazy yet. But uh, let's hook it up to the resistor bank here and check output power. And well, it's probably going to be just like anything else. Same voltage, same output power. Okay, on the scope here, let's give it a power test. There's clipping. No oddball stuff going on, so that's good. So we'll tune out the uh, clipping. Nice symmetrical. And put some waveforms on the screen. And take a reading. Looks like 19.52 or 3 changes. And we're getting 95.3 watts. Yeah, that's in the neighborhood what we get. Uh, keeping in mind that my power supply here only goes up to plus and minus 32 volts. Whereas the amplifier is uh, designed for plus minus 35 volts. So normally you should get over 100 watts with a 4 ohm load. So there you have it. Dun 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 dun. The Intel inside fan module inline JAT501 magical board amplifier. Can we get a macro on this thing? Yeah, looks like the camera wants to cooperate with a macro focus on this thing. Okay, well that was fun. Enough of that. Now I want to take this board here. This board's never been powered up. I don't remember if I said that. I'm in the second night of shooting here. I'm going to take this board off and mount this in its place. And like I said, I set everything up, biased everything the same by using the meter. So when I plug it in and turn it on, it should just work right off the bat. Okay, the other board's mounted. Since I don't have connectors for the supply, I'm just connecting to the collectors of the outputs because they're tied to the rails in a sketchy ground connection. So let me put the meter across the output here and see what the offset voltage is. Okay, across the output. Uh, around 3.8, we'll say, millivolts. So yeah, that's pretty close to what the other board was. Bias was a little high. I had to turn that down. It was like 30 or so and I turned it down to about 26 millivolts what I recommend setting it at so this officially concludes the JAT 501 amplifier project this won't be the last you'll see it and when I get a proper distortion analyzer I will uh, run this through I already know it's pretty good from testing the prototype board. Uh, these shouldn't be any worse, that's for sure. And uh, I know I was a little conservative on the design of this, and I'm going to talk about hot rodding this. As it is, it's to me, it's more than good enough. There's audio file stuff that, you know, can you really hear the difference if I... Uh, you know, lower the distortion at 20 kilohertz, you know, in that area, if it's really going to make a difference. I just don't believe that's audible. But we can change some components on here. It won't change the design, just the value of components, maybe, and see what happens. Maybe you want this to have more power at 8 ohms. We'll talk about uh, boosting the power for uh, 8 ohm use. 
Uh, what else? Just some other things. I mean, like I say, I think the board is more than good enough for a nice hi-fi amp as it stands, but I can tinker with components. In the description, I have the files, the Gerber files. Make sure you read the README file first. There's some information in there. I have a circuit description. It's kind of a basic description of how this amp works. We kind of go through the stages. Also have the latest cleaned up schematic. And what else? Of course the Gerber files. Oh, there's one thing I should mention. On these boards, it has all the little part numbers. So, you know, when you assemble this thing, just look at the part number and pop the component in. It's very hard to read these blue resistors, so I would check them with a meter because a 1K resistor is not the normal brown, black, red. It's actually a uh, brown, black, black, brown. So yeah, these precision resistors are uh, colored a little bit differently because of the extra precision there. So I ended up with five boards here. I have these two. I think I'm actually going to build an amplifier out of these two. I got this one that was sent in. That was the first version of the board. Of course, the inline board here we just played with. And the prototype on um, perf board that started the whole mess. So yeah, the JAT501 project. So once again, thanks for the support and following through the project and all that good stuff. It was fun, educational, and ended up with a nice little product there. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.